case that has captivated the attention of investigators and the public alike, the Inge Lotz murder case continues to perplex and intrigue. The chilling details surrounding the tragic event have sparked intense speculation and intense debate. In this discussion, we delve into the mysterious circumstances surrounding the Inge Lotz murder case, examining the evidence, the theories, and the enduring questions that still linger. Join us as we embark on a journey to uncover the truth behind this perplexing crime. Lotz was a girl who didn't have any brothers or sisters, and her parents loved and cared for her a lot. She had extraordinary talents in both music and math. She did well in her classes about calculating risks and probabilities at the University of Stellenbosch. It was at that university where she first met her boyfriend, Fred van der Viver. Fred van der Viver was a good-looking guy who was tall, smart, and quietly confident. When they were together, they looked like a very impressive and attractive couple. They had been dating for less than a year, but it seemed like they had a great future together. Lotz had already talked to her parents about her plans to get engaged to Fred soon. Their beautiful love story suddenly ended on a very hot and humid Wednesday. It was a sad and devastating day because it marked the cruel end of Lotz's life. Inge Lotz was killed in her apartment just outside Stellenbosch, South Africa on 16 March 2005. The person who killed her hit her head many times with a hard object and stabbed her with a knife. Inge Lotz was the only child of Professor Jan and Jonita Lotz, a suspect. The police found a fingerprint on a DVD holder that belonged to Inge's boyfriend, Fred van der Viger. Since Inge had rented the DVD shortly before she died, it suggests that Fred was with her that afternoon. However, Fred says he was at work 50 kilometers away the whole day. The police arrested Fred van der Viver for Ing's murder mainly because of this fingerprint evidence, which made him look guilty. The police also discovered a decorative hammer in Fred's car, which might have been used to cause the injuries on Ing's head. In addition to the boyfriend, other suspects emerged from the periphery of Ing's life. A co-worker with a history of unusual behavior and a series of disturbing social media posts raised eyebrows among investigators. They meticulously pieced together evidence, including surveillance footage and witness testimonies, to establish a timeline of the co-workers' movements on the day of the murder. Every lead was followed with precision, leaving no stone unturned in the pursuit of justice. Furthermore, a close friend who had exhibited signs of possessiveness and an unrequited romantic interest in Inge became a person of interest. Investigators carefully examined their relationship delving into text messages, emails, and personal belongings to gather any potential evidence. The friend's erratic behavior and cryptic messages raised suspicions, prompting investigators to dig deeper into their possible involvement in the tragic crime. Amidst the investigation into the murder of Inge Lotz, a crucial piece of evidence emerged. A bloodied shoe found at the crime scene. Forensic experts meticulously examined the shoe, conducting DNA analysis and scrutinizing its unique markings. The results revealed a match with the DNA of Inge's wealthy boyfriend, raising suspicions about his potential involvement. Furthermore, surveillance footage from a neighboring building captured a figure resembling the boyfriend entering and leaving Inge's apartment building around the time of the crime. The combination of the incriminating shoe and the surveillance footage provided compelling evidence that linked the boyfriend to the scene of the brutal murder, intensifying the focus on him as a prime suspect. A decade of digging and searching for answers. A person named Brown, who is a director and filmmaker working independently, dedicated almost 10 years to uncovering the truth about this case. In January 2021, Brown joined forces with News 24 and Catherine Rice. During Brown's investigation, he spoke to many important sources and even traveled to the United States to talk to forensic experts who specialize in solving such cases. From these experts, Brown discovered that the evidence against a man named Fred, who was a suspect in the murder, was not accurate and might have been made up. Surprisingly, the police had ignored another possible suspect. After a very long trial, Fred, also known as Van der Viger, was eventually found not guilty. However, despite the court's decision, 
Many people still have doubts about his innocence. Brown explained that if Fred's family did not have enough money to hire respected experts to defend him, Fred could have easily ended up in jail for the rest of his life. This raises some important questions. Why would the police try to blame an innocent man? Were other potential suspects thoroughly investigated? These questions are explored in a podcast series that was released exclusively for paying subscribers of News24 in September 2021. Justice Denied In the heart-wrenching Inge Lotz murder case, justice became a casualty, with doubts cast upon the evidence and a flawed system exposed. The trial against Fred van der Viver crumbled as experts challenged the fingerprint evidence, and the privileged nature of justice was laid bare. The case revealed deep-seated issues within South Africa's criminal justice system, highlighting neglect, incompetence, and a lack of resources. The podcast series by Brown shed light on the systemic failures, leaving a bitter realization that justice had been denied. The Lotz family, after 17 years, finally found answers but uncovered a malady infecting the core of the system. The case serves as a haunting reminder of the human mysteries that remain unresolved leaving a sense of unease in its wake. The mystery that remains. The police ignored an important piece of information during their investigation. There was a man named Werner Carolus who admitted to being involved in the crime several weeks after Lot's body was discovered. Carolus had a history of drug addiction and a long record of committing crimes. However, the police did not thoroughly investigate Carolus, even though a former detective named Piet Viljoen recommended that he should be considered a suspect. According to Brown, this is just one example of how the police and prosecutors failed the families of both Lotz and Van der Viver. Brown believes that Lotz's unsolved murder shows the problems in South Africa's criminal justice system. These problems include not gathering enough evidence, forensic laboratories that are falling apart, incompetence, and a police force that lacks sufficient resources. The podcast focused on one specific case, but to me, it was a case that exposed the flaws in the justice system as a whole, Brown added. Giving the family answers. After 17 years, the authorities finally provided the Lotz family with answers, bringing them a sense of completion. Rice, who believes that storytelling methods like podcasts are valuable tools, sees them as a way to draw attention to the sad and alarming situation of crime in South Africa. She expressed her concern that victims are being consistently let down, with many people not receiving the justice they deserve. Rice further emphasized that our justice system is facing a serious issue, and since the Ingelots case, the situation has worsened considerably. As we conclude our exploration of the Ingelots murder case, it becomes apparent that this is a story that remains shrouded in mystery. Despite the passage of time and countless investigative efforts, definitive answers have eluded us. The case has left behind a trail of unanswered questions, leaving us to contemplate the complexities of human nature and the limits of our justice system. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and reflection. As we move forward, may we strive to seek justice, find and honor the memory of those whose lives have been tragically cut short.